Welcome back, everybody. This is the Free Agent Show. I am Meg Schmitz. The mission of my show is to share inspiring conversations with real people who took the leap into business ownership, franchising, and freedom. From corporate refugees and executives tired of the desk job to entrepreneurs and investors looking for more support in their business journey, my podcast aims to spotlight real people who stepped into the realm of business ownership and the great unknown, took control of their destiny and became their own boss. Today, I am pleased to welcome to the show Kirk Grimmel, Team Logic IT. And Kirk, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. It's great to see you on the first Friday monthly meetings and to hear about how things are progressing with your business through the pandemic. But before we talk about that, why don't you give the listeners a little background about your own professional career and then what inspired you to dabble in business ownership and ultimately make that decision to take the leap? Sure. Yeah. Um, so like Meg said, my name is Kirk Ball and owner of Team Logic IT. Uh, being an owner of Team Logic IT was never uh, in my future vision, dream, or thought process at one point in time. But I've always been in IT and technology uh, for thirty some years. You know, I started out from school, worked at a large consulting business, moved from that, and uh, worked at worked at a very large company here in southeastern Wisconsin for a good solid eighteen years. I uh, was in software development, application development. Uh, you know, and, and at, all of a sudden, at one point in time, we got to a point of separation where I was without a job, and it gave me the opportunity and the freedom to think about what do I really want to do in life, you know, facing just before being 50 and trying to explore where, where do you go in life and trying to understand that if I wasn't given a, a few months to think through that process. I, I probably wouldn't be here uh, as an owner of Team Logic IT. Uh, moreover, you know, from just having that additional time uh, and going through the process, I was fortunate to be able to be at an outplacement services firm with Lee Hack Harrison. And at Lee Hack, they brought in a lot of different speakers. One of those speakers was Meg. Uh, and going to that presentation was one of the big things that adjusted, changed changed my world. Uh, sitting in on the presentation and thinking back and listening to Meg, she talked about, um, you know, franchising and with franchising, how that if you're going to be a business owner, your success is really built upon the process uh, and the systems of what you're buying into, not to fall in love with a certain product um, or a certain, you know, certain industry or anything else, just rather you're buying into as an investor, you're buying into the support and a team structure that exists there. Um, moreover, it was the stats that she put up that said, well, in the franchise world, and, and Meg, you know, these stats probably as much or more than anybody else, but it was like, you know, 80% of, um, Franchises succeed past five years, but in a small business, and if you're just starting up and you're a brand new entrepreneur and doing your own business, it's like the exact flip of that. It's like 80% fail in the first five years, some, some stats like that. Mm -hmm. And I asked her, well, why is that? And basically, you're buying into the system, follow the process, you're buying into a proven model. Um, I'm an engineer originally from heart, right? Industrial engineer. And I'm like, you know, I always felt I could uh, do something on my own. You know, but I figured, um, you know, it was a little bit of that uncomfort of just really doing it on your own completely and having that support structure from a franchise provided that as an opportunity um, and I felt I could follow a blueprint for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, but but then as kind of moved on from there, it was like, well, what franchise, what system, what support structure would I look at? And the biggest thing there was it was, you know, sitting down with Meg as well as with my wife trying to understand us and then figure out, well, what, what makes us drive? I already spent a couple months trying to understand what was driving me. And my first thought was anything but technology. I've been in technology for so long and I need an adjustment and a change. Looked in a lot of different kinds of businesses. Um, but through it, I found out I was more burnt out of, we'll say, corporate America, large business. And I did have a strong passion. I have an extremely strong passion for technology and really how to be able to connect and use that by working with other small business owners and helping other small business owners be successful by the use of technology. So yeah. fortunate, you know, through that whole process, it became a journey. Uh, it's not something that just happens instantly and overnight. You know what the answers are. Um, it needed to go through 
I needed to go through a process with him there. So that's well, kind of how I, I remember cool. working with you and Lisa, and we were pretty far down the path with another brand. And do you remember what the trigger was that caused that hard left turn over to Team Logic IT? Yeah, uh, a couple, a couple different things, but probably the biggest was um, I, I wanted to make sure it was something that I felt comfortable with and I could be successful within the business plan. And I needed to wrap my mind around how I was going to be able to do that. And a couple of the other industries were a little bit more for and, and then being able to see, you know, maybe how could I make, you know, how could I make a inventory turn turnover and everything else? I just couldn't get the numbers and the math and the business plan to really kind of put together. Uh, and once I started working with Team Logic IT, just having that IT background and experience, but understanding their business model and what that revenue model would look like and the cost structure would look like, it all kind of pulled together. And for me, it was really the, um, it, it was um, having that business plan, you know, kind of come to light um, that I could see, okay, I could be successful doing this. Uh, and secondly, it was getting over my mental hurdle of being burnt out of IT, <laughs> realizing that's not what it was. It was just needing to find something I did have passion about. So while you are not necessarily buying a certain product or a system, you, you do got to have an interest in it. You got to have a, you know, a passion and an area. And, you know, originally I was like, no, nah, it's not at all what I want to get into in IT, but, but. Uh, realizing where where I burn passion from and it is with, you know, helping other businesses with their technology challenges. So Yeah. Yeah. Well, gosh, and what has been really fun for me in the last few months with our first Friday group and the participation there is how many of you business owners found out just how essential you are and um, and the growth that the instantaneous demand that started to show up. How have you pivoted into the pandemic? And have you, do you have say one best practice that you implemented or tell us about that? Yeah, I mean, so when, um, you know, go back in March, the first part was taking a look at our, our, our business um, and what we're doing. And truthfully, a little bit nervous and scared, kind of going, okay, I don't know, there's a lot of uncertainty. Um, I think I think it was a little bit easier for me versus some other business owners because we we're only open for four years. So I needed to always, you got to be ready, fire, aim, using a good old uh, uh, mentor of mine to be able to adapt and adjust quickly. Um, so I felt I was still in that new uh, new business stage and growth stage. So I, I took out a sheet of paper and wrote down my uh, coronavirus pandemic plan. Uh, and wrote down the business plan and tried to just write some bullet points and what do I need to pivot and shift on. Uh, it helped with thinking through what it, what it might be. Um, but at the end of the day, um, it was first then thinking about what's the safety and security and risk that we could have as our own team and employees. Being a smaller team, so I made that decision pretty quick to say, okay, send everybody home. Or everybody work from home. We're a company that embraces technology and we help people remotely already, so there's no way that we need to be in the office. So, so we did that, got everybody working from home, and we've since switched to more of a hybrid model of uh, work from home and in the office uh, to just kind of build that, continue to build chemistry and cohesion. Plus, sometimes we've got to get our hands on parts and supplies, and so that's in the office. And so we, we've worked towards that. Um, but the other big thing was just really reaching out to our clients and understanding where are they at with um, the pandemic, what struggles are they facing, and what are the things that we can maybe, you know, possibly help them with. Obviously, we've helped quite a number of clients and customers with moving to a, a remote workforce uh, standpoint, so using technology like Zoom. Yeah. Now, I think, I think we're all looking forward to the day that we're not just living life in Zoom or life in Teams mm -hmm. and, and being able to do something, you know, but at the core, that's, you know, what we're doing, and there's a lot of different challenges sometimes just getting that working, uh, not only for an individual, but even for a full business. So I was reaching out to them and helping them out. Uh, but then it was also trying to just having the conversation about how their business is doing uh, and, you know, wh where are things headed so that we could we could either be ready if they were growing. And it was surprising how some manufacturers were starting to grow in other areas that I didn't even know about their business, uh, you know, and others that needed to do furloughs and being able to be there to do the difficult work of shutting down some people's accounts and securing the data and securing their systems. Mm. So. We didn't have a lot of time to think from beyond that couple first couple days, 
uh, and then working from home because it became just extremely busy and just stay, trying to stay on top of it with each customer for the changing demands. And it has not stopped, I guess. <laughs> it's continued to be very busy. Have you, have you changed your staffing levels or your hours of operation? Um, so our hours of operation have always been 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, 365. And we do that with our national brand and reach and the help desk. So uh, that's been uh, uh, consistent. Uh, secondly, um, staffing wise, we have increased. Um, so I did apply through PPP funding uh, and took, it, took that as an opportunity and got some good information from corporate about suggestions to do that. Uh, but it was also to maintain and or hire and add staff. There was a lot of uncertainty for sure. Um, but but we looked at that as an opportunity to say, well, how do I get ahead of the game if it does get busy? Um, and having that extra comfort and security a little bit with with a financial loan or, um, you know, we don't know too much even about forgiveness or anything else yet. But um, investing that money into the business and providing the jobs in the community because that's what the intent was for. So we've increased um, by 20% of our staff already. Um, and tomorrow I got three people coming in for final interviews and hopefully making another offer tomorrow. Excellent. So you're yep. growing. Yep. And so since your business is an essential business, how have you managed the work-life balance over the last few months hmm. might've been a challenge. Uh, you know, managing work-life balance, whether it's over the last few months or from the, all four years when you get ownership of business is a challenge. <laughs> so I'm not sure the pandemic has uh, caused an impact on that. If, if anything, it's made it a little bit easier uh, because th there's not too much life outside of life right now. So, you know, uh, I'm a diehard sports fan, so being able to go to a Badger game is not going to be happening. Going to a Packer game is not happening, you know, so it's watching on TV. So the opportunities that exist in that personal life standpoint, um, you know, is is more limited. It's been just to focus on the, the you know, relationships and family uh, and having conversations when you can and whatever media you can. So. It, I think it's been an increase higher on the, on the work side and work life balance is all you know, a balancing game, but yeah, the, the work is swinging down quite heavily and, and putting a lot of hours and time in, but I think the environment allows and leads to that. I do think as a business owner though, when you get into it, if you, if you think it's going to be very simple to do and, and work-life balance is great and easy uh, for a few years or whenever it happens, I'm not sure that's going to be the case. Um, you got to find the time so you don't get the burnout though. Um, yeah. find, find ways to, to find your own balance within there. Um, I've made some other adjustments early on in the first six months of ownership. Um, I, I became vegetarian shortly before around the same time. And then quickly within it being an owner, I realized I was going to become quickly the very heaviest and out of shape vegetarian in the world because I was eating at gas stations and trying to find vegetarian food in a gas station is not easy. And so grilled cheese or churros or different things. Uh, and I stepped back after six, nine months and said, okay, this is not going down a good path. I got to build an exercise and diet and wellness into it. Um, and so I'm encouraged and actually encouraged heavily to being a lot more healthier vegetarian. And when COVID started, I was like, how do I continue to re regain that focus and work? And I start and it became with diet my goal during COVID-19 was lose 19 pounds during COVID-19. So um, I've got 15 done. Um, nice. So maybe if I lose these four pounds, we'll all go back to normal, right? <laughs> um, so. Oh, yeah. The direct correlation there. It, it is funny how many people have talked about COVID-19 resulting in the COVID-20. Um, but it's something that came to mind, and that is over the last few years, have you reached out to a business coach or a group, I think that you have, I want you to talk about that and, and the support and, and mentoring that you've sought. A, a number of different groups and, and structure. I mean, the first part is being part of a franchise arrangement with Team Logic IT. We had our own pace setters group and starting group of all people that started the same. That lasts for the first year, um, but we felt such a strong bond and helping and leaning on each other that we've just continued it. So I led that um, same pace setters group for two years afterwards, and then I passed the torch to somebody else in that group, and I'm still in it. So we meet once a month um, regularly, um, all via teams who are scattered across the country. 
um, and doing the video calls and sharing experiences. And in the same industry, it's been helpful. Secondly, there's been a group of good franchise owners um, in Southeast Wisconsin that are not in the same business. And we get together um, to review each other's business plan on a more formal basis. Um, so that, that's one part of the structure. And the other is an every other week coffee meeting, which we've been able to, we made virtual for a while during COVID, but now we're able to have an outdoor coffee meeting. Not sure what we're going to do in winter coming up here. Uh, but but um, we've leaned on each other for that because I think we're all facing some of the same challenges, be it with hiring, being it with uh, uh, customer service, staffing, financials, um, PPP funding, all of that to be able to find that additional support. Lastly, yeah. I'm in talks right now with uh, my former executive coach, which helped me, uh, you know, in, in my prior life kind of within here and stay, stay in touch with him. Uh, and trying to see if he can provide some services to the lead in my office, uh, who's going to be a business partner and cutting in an equity stake into our business with my CEO. Uh, but I want to make sure that he has the uh, some of the same resources that I've been afforded in the past uh, to help continue to help him grow and go to the next level too. Nice. And that is theoretically one of the advantages of being part of a franchise is that there's the fabric of the other owners. And I don't know if it's a human trait or male, female trait or, or, or what, but there, the, the resources within the franchise should be there because you're all sharing the same business model, maybe not executing the same um, within your own group at team logic the, the group that you were referencing that you led for the those two years and beyond, did that group change? Were there new owners that came in? So from my uh, quick start group uh, within there, it, it did change. A few of those owners uh, either drop, dropped off or are in, directly in business or moved into a kind of a different group. Uh, and then our corporate uh, office did provide um, a little bit of, of a better dynamic mix within our group of suggestions uh, for people that were kind of at the same stage or size and like-minded thought process. Um, so they did kind of, you know, recommend a few other additions to the group. And yes, and, and we pulled a couple other smaller groups together. Uh, so we got about mm, eight regular people uh, that are in that group now. So I'd say for the last year and a half, two years, it's been the same group uh, from there, but Probably like a lot of different networking groups, there's a, a shelf life where people come and they go, they, ex, they excuse themselves if it's just not a good fit anymore. And I see that too in our Milwaukee marketplace, a lot of different networking opportunities that are in the market. And certainly within our group, we've had some key um, core, core small groups um, form from the bigger group. Right. and very rewarding to see that it's not what's in it for me, but we're stronger together and um, sharing best practices. Yeah. I mean, yesterday for the last two days, um, the owner who's starting up Team Logic IT in Madison um, has been in our office. And I think the biggest thing that I can do to kind of pay it forward is to, you know, have them spend some time with us, him and his lead tech. Um, so they, you know, really kind of got to see with where it might be going for the future vision. Probably would be one of the things I should have done. I should have drove down to Eric Person's office down in Illinois yeah. He was my mentor. He always was more than willing to have discussions and everything. Uh, but just actually seeing an office that's been operational a few years more ahead of you, uh, hopefully I hopefully provided tremendous value for, for Jeremy and help, helps him get started off the ground a little bit faster too. Uh, but I think it doesn't have to be exactly in a franchise model the same, but finding somebody that's either in the same business um, mindset as yourself, um, even a different industry, you know, I, I think is good because you can learn a lot. And, and I think many business owners are willing to take other people under the wings to help them grow and be able to be successful as well, too. So. Yeah, yeah. Very helpful, um, particularly if you're all waving the same flag, pulling on the same rope, but getting those different perspectives and, and picking off a best practice. And like, wow, I didn't think of that. And um, being able to execute it in your own business is and I asked this a little bit differently before, but is there anything in particular from your networking that was an aha moment and you've now incorporated and into your business to help it grow in the future? 
Um, you know, I, I, I don't know if it was a direct aha moment, but I think the biggest, uh, the value, especially even in our southeastern Wisconsin network owners group franchise meeting that we have, has been um, the, the need for discipline uh, and accountability. Um, so once a year, I get the opportunity to share my full business plan. And, it, and it's really to be able to be comfortable with sharing your financials and sharing everything else. But um, the, the, that meeting and that discussion and that board type of uh, review um, it's almost not about necessarily the meeting. It's um, stepping back and uh, thinking through your business, where you're at and where you're going. Um, because otherwise, you know, if you're, if you don't, if you don't really have a plan, it's like nobody really understands in the business, even with where are things heading and going to. So, it, you know, the biggest aha for me is, okay, how do you, how do you, work on the business more and into business, probably an overused kind of term, you know, uh, uh, quite a bit. Um, but I think it, it's just that discipline that's required to um, step back and look at where, where you've come and, you know, what do you need to change and what do you got to pivot on and what do you got to do next? That There's a common theme that I've been hearing over the last few weeks, and that is make a plan, work the plan. Unless there's a sneak attack like a pandemic that <laughs> we didn't expect to go on as long as this, but it's that whole notion of having having a destination in mind. What is your goal? You might have to shift gears if the wind if the wind shifts. You are going to have to change your direction. But being being wanton in your business management will not deliver a favorable return. Yeah, my. Um... Um, my main tool and way that we do that for managing the plan is um, so I'm sure some of others have talked about it, but is we use EOS traction. Um, so traction is a management kind of um, a footprint, right? And it starts with some of the basic management uh, principles. You know, do you have a mission statement? Do you have a vision statement? So, uh, and then do you have your values? So making sure that that's in place and that you're incorporating that in your daily operation is, is important. You know, but then beyond that ends up being with a scorecard and kind of measurables to, to know where you're at and making sure everybody has a number to kind of work with in the system. But then, you know, every day there's issues that come up and either you're working to resolve those issues a little bit more effectively or put them aside and saying, look, you can't take on everything and you, and you can't, um, you know, you, you, you can't just conquer, you know. Rome in one day or anything else, you just might have to put that off into the, um, you know, waiting area for the next quarter and try to stay disciplined and focused on what your primary objective and goal is that quarter. You know, you can have a number of different goals, but what's your number one initiative that you're trying to get better at? Mm -hmm. And then making sure that you're making headway related to that. So, um, I, I would say that's our ideal. Now, <laughs> I, I need to probably listen to a little bit my own uh, medicine here too, because I would say during the chaotic year that 2020 has been and with COVID and everything else, we have not taken out that playbook. But we're soon November 1st here. Uh, great time to put together the business plan and update the annual business plan and then get that discipline going on a regular basis again, especially as we're growing uh, and the business gets bigger. You you need to be on top of it even more so. I mean, you, you can't, it used to be the day where I knew absolutely everything 100% of what ran and happened in my business. It's not the case anymore. And it's, you know, the, the core success of that though is by having a great team, All right. So if you get the right people and you get the right people on the bus and then you can figure out the seats that they're on, you know, the better your success is going to be too. So that's also yeah. part of the traction. You know where you're going. So the... And looking back over the last few years that you have been a business owner and some of the successes that you have been able to experience, are there any key decision points or, or things that happened that you wish you could have a do-over or do differently? Yeah. You know, I think um, regret uh, and trying to think about and do-over you spend and you wallow too much time in that, you're never going to really be able to kind of figure out where you get better on. And when you make errors and you make, um, you know, bad mistakes, they're going to happen. Uh, and so it's just focusing on continuous improvement and more of a, uh, towards a positive side, so try to be able to stay to be the glass half full guy and move on and kind of forget that. So if there are, have been some in the past, I try to <laughs> move them out of my mind and not even think about them that much. You know, if, 
if anything, I'd say it's kind of maybe the theme I was just talking about now and probably was early on in the first year, which was sticking to the business plan. <laughs> you know, um, I, you know, we got out of the gate strong and I was like, okay, well, this is easy. Let's, we'll do this oh. and everything else and started making investments, you know, thinking we're bigger than we really are, not understanding the implications on that. Um, so when you get to certain pivot points, you got to stop and think about the plan and then go, where are you going next? Right. And incorporate it so that it would just be with how do you continue to yeah, define the plan and work the plan? Yeah. I was thinking about one person I, I had interviewed and in, in the interview format, it, it didn't sound right. And, but this woman had a number of great comments. And when I asked her what, if there was anything she wished she could do over, she said, I want to do the last six months over again. They were so much fun and so rewarding. And I got so much out of it. I don't want it to end. So if I could go back and do anything over again, it was just fun. I want to go back <laughs> because I learned so much. I thought, what a great outlook. Um, something That's a, a point of view that that uh, I think I could adopt as well. There have been some great learning opportunities over these last um challenging months. Um, if Lisa were on right now, what would she say was the best thing, best outcome of the two of you investing in Team Logic IT? Um, uh, that she got to the point where she doesn't have to work in the business anymore. <laughs> I think, uh, I think it uh, strengthened our, uh, I mean, we just celebrated our 28th anniversary this past Saturday. Uh, so, um, she, you know, she was partner in crime and in life and everything else. We never thought we'd be partners in related to business. Um, you know, but she was the, the anchor and the support system for those first couple of years where it was really difficult. So as much as the business groups were there, it was still having her to be able to lean on and be that sounding board to make sure, okay, am I going crazy or not? Plus she put a lot of hours and work into the business. And I think she'd say, well, part of that success in the business is she doesn't have to come to the office every single week and doesn't have to do. I mean, she'll come in tomorrow because it was one of our guys birthdays this week to bring in birthday treats and to be able to do the fun things that she wants to do, but she doesn't have to do some of the things that she used to have to do. So I think the success in the business was that she was able to work herself out of the business to the point where I think then she kind of got enough of an entrepreneurial spirit uh, and drive on for her own thing. So while she's not buying into a franchise, she's started up her own decorating interior design business and get going up. And she's taking her real estate licenses um, and going to be on her own on something. So I think it, I think, I think it would be maybe just uh, seeing that we can be successful outside of corporate America and working other jobs and working for somebody else. So She's always had that creative streak. I'm glad she's dialing into that. And I imagine that the interior decorating will, will funnel quite nicely into the real estate. Yeah. Um, just her, her personal point of view and, and vision vantage point, being able to help a potential homeowner look at a house and say, forget the fact that the room is painted red. Yeah. <laughs> I can see Lisa doing this. So this is, this is an interesting I and she was able to get to that stage and to get that level of comfort because she found somebody like like my Meg, she found through her, uh, so Amy Kriegoff has yeah. been a uh, you know source for her to encourage her and help her through it. So she has a mentor to work with as well too. So I think some of the same type of things to find people to, to either give you the nudge or give you the support or give you the confidence to do something, you know, ends up being needed as well too, so. Nice. Well, since we're coming up on the end of the 30 minutes, do you want to put in a little plug for your business so people can contact you? Sure. Um, so, I, again, my name is Kirk Kamal, uh, Team Logic IT of uh, Northern, uh, Southeast Wisconsin. <laughs> so, Kirk Kamal, Team Logic IT, Southeast Wisconsin. You can give us a call at 262-834-6207. Um, we're in Germantown, Wisconsin, and Waukesha. Our larger office is in Germantown. Um, but we work and support small, medium businesses throughout Southeast Wisconsin. Um, it can be with any other technology problem you're having. If technology is fighting you, we'll make it work for you instead of it being, um, you know, working against you. So happy to help out um, people first and um, business first for what your goals are. And then we'll figure out how to apply technology to help, help you be successful in your business. 
uh, businesses of all size. Excellent. Well, I want to thank you again for setting this up and making the time to talk to me. And I'm sure that the audience will get a lot of value out of this. As always, your wife, your life, and your money are the three things that are most important to me when you make this decision. And it's really delightful for me to um, catch up with you and find out how all of these elements are coming together um, successfully. And um, I will look forward to seeing you at a first Friday meeting. And um, again, just thanks for making the time to do this and we'll catch up again soon. Great, thank you for having me.